we're so happy to have you guys with us this morning. We're going to stand as you're able and worship Jesus. Talk to stars to shine. 
tears to the one who graced the dead of night. Pull me from the dark and set my heart alight. Here's to the one who made my heart to sing Open up my eyes and washed away my sin Here's to the one who gave his life for mine Broke all my chains and set me free All right to the way has done. Here's to the way you wiped away my past. Here's to the future and the things to come. Here's to my Savior's everlasting love. To the way Here's to your kindness, here's to your goodness, here's to your freedom, here's to the day I see you, Jesus, here's to your glory, here's to your greatness, here's to your kingdom, here's to the name of Jesus, to the way. The 
fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me your name ashes of defeat the resurrecting king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrecting king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrecting King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrecting King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrecting King is resurrecting me in your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrecting king is resurrecting me the tomb where so Soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed the grave Our God has robbed the grave The 
God, we're here to worship you today. God, no matter what we're going through, God, we look to you and we say that you are great. Moments of uncertainty, God, help us to put our hope and our trust in you. God, we love you and we sing to you this morning. Children and the children, may his friend. 
we love you. God, we're so thankful that you are for us and not against us. God, we're so thankful that we can put our hope and our trust in you. That God, during all seasons of our life, that God, we can look to you for our source for healing, our source for help, our source for hope. God, we can look to you. God, you will help us. Jesus, we love you and we worship you today. God, we thank you for this time that we've had to worship you together. God, would you open our heart that we would hear everything that you want us to hear today. That we would leave here a little different than the way that we came in. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, church. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us. You can be seated and we'll get started shortly. Good morning, church. Good morning. good morning, church. Is everyone sleeping this morning? Okay. Well, good morning. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. We just have a couple announcements that, uh, that we have to go through. And uh, the first one is, is we have a, an event uh, coming up uh, July 31st from 5.30 to 10 o'clock. We're going to do the CGS uh, Fest and Movie Night. And so what we're doing is we bought a big inflatable uh, screen, and we're going to do an outdoor movie. We're going to be showing Facing the Giants, just uh, one of my all-time favorites. And it's just a great movie. If you've never seen it, we encourage you to come. If you have seen it, we encourage you to come and be a part of it. But that's not it. There's going to be all kinds of games and activities for the kids to do, and uh, there's going to be food trucks, which is probably the most important thing. Uh, we have uh, Frank's Fries coming. We have a barbecue place coming. We have an ice cream place coming. And, and it's just going to be a great time. So we would love to have you come and be a part of that. That's Friday, July 31st from 530 to 10. Uh, we are also looking for people that would like to help run some games for the kids. So if that's something that you are interested in, uh, maybe just kind of overseeing a game or just being a part of it, uh, would you see Judy Robinson? She is, she is right there towards the back. If you would see her, and she's going to be at a table after the service today. She's shaking her head yes, so I guessed right. So she's going to be out there. If you have any questions about the games or anything like that, would you see her? Uh, we just want to make this, you know, uh, we weren't able to do vacation Bible school this year, and so we just want to make this something special. For, for the kids and for the family. So uh, we want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. We will be observing social distance rules and things like that. So, uh, so you can invite your neighbors and things like that. But it is going to be a great time. Uh, July 31st is coming right up, actually. So uh, we would love for you to come and be a part of that. Uh, during this time, we're going to take up our offering, and uh, if you're here today, uh, you can uh, place your offering in the baskets in the back. Uh, you can also send in a check. Uh, you can uh, use the Church Center app, which also has different uh, events for the church that are coming up. So if you, if you log in and you download that app, it's super easy to use. If you have questions about that, you can see me. I'd love to help you get that set up. But it also has some of the announcements and some of the upcoming events. You can listen to some of the sermons right from your phone and everything. And so it's just a great tool. So we encourage you to do that. You can also text, uh, I can't read that far back, uh, 84321. 84321, uh, you can text the amount that you would like to give, and then you can also go to cgs.church, and you can give that way, however you feel uh, led to give today. Uh, let's bow our heads. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for today. God, the opportunity that we have to be here and to worship you together. And God, we just, uh, we ask that now you would take this offering to use it to further your kingdom, God, to do your work all across the world. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. It is good to see everyone this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us. If you are a guest, thank you for uh, being here with us this morning. If you're online, thank you for tuning in and uh, checking out our service. And want to say hello to all those that are in the back, uh, in the overflow room as well. Uh, I forgot to do that one week, and they're like, "Hey, make sure you sit, you know let people know we're back here." So uh, we do have people back in the overflow room. So thank you for being here. And again, thank you for watching online. My name is Brad Keen. 
and I am the senior pastor here, and we're just excited to be able to worship Jesus together, amen? And uh, so it's just good to, uh, to be here uh, this morning, and uh, this morning we're going to start uh, a new series. It's just going to be a two-week series, and we're going to dig into that here in just a few minutes, but we want to open with a word of prayer. And uh, this morning, you know, the, all of us, I think, are grieving in some ways. We all have probably heard, and if not, there was um, an accident uh, the other night, and uh, Mikey Borsos and Brendan Essex passed away, and so we just want to keep uh, their families and their friends uh, in prayer, and so... We, uh, you know, Mikey was just at, at camp with us, um, you know, a week ago, Pastor Jeremy talked about uh, him last Sunday, and so we had the opportunity yesterday to go over and, and uh, just minister to uh, Mikey's family and, and those that were there, and, and we're going to continue to do that in the days and, and the weeks and ahead, so just want to make sure that, that as a family, as a church family, we're praying uh, for these family members, because, you know, Mikey was and is one of ours, and uh, so we just want to rally around and, and, and support them, and so make sure you guys are keeping them in your thoughts and prayers. So let's, let's do that right now. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and we lift up uh, Brendan's family, God, that you would bless them, God, that you would comfort them, Lord, that you'd give them peace, and we lift up Mikey's family and his friends, Lord, his parents, his, his, his siblings, his extended family, uh, his church family, Lord, just all the all the the friends that 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 loved him and and, and his humor and and uh, God, just his his giant heart. His heart was bigger than he was, and uh, so Lord, we just lift them up to you, God. We pray for healing in our community, God. We just ask that your peace and that your love and your presence would surround everybody, Lord, as we go through uh, trying days ahead. Lord, pray that, 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 that all of us in our way would go through the, 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 the process of grief the right way, God, that, that, that we wouldn't stuff things down, but God, that we would cry, that we would laugh, that we would tell stories, uh, God, that we would do the things that would, would honor Mikey. And God, we're so thankful that he's in heaven with you, God, that, that, that he loved you. God, that he knew you as his Lord and his Savior. And, and so, Lord, he's, he, he's in a great place right now, but Lord, we're still here, and so there is, there is loss and, and there is hurt with that. But God, we pray for the entire community, the entire uh, Elmwood uh, School District, God, the, the, the families beyond that, Lord, as, as there are many different school districts and, 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 and towns represented here in this church, God, we pray for everyone that has been impacted by that, God, that your peace would reign supreme, God, that you would just, just, just cover people with your love, and that they would sense your presence during this time. God, we pray for all those with needs. God, those that are struggling financially uh, due to the pandemic that we've been in. God, for those that are in need of jobs. God, those that are in need of healing in their life. God, we speak health. We speak life over them. We're thankful, God, that you are a good God and that you are a God that heals. And Lord, now we ask that you'd open our eyes, that you'd open our ears to receive all that you have for us this morning. God, may we learn to love love the way that you love us. God, completely, unconditionally, without strings attached. And we're so thankful for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we are going to look at a Bible story that we can just learn a lot from. And, you know, the great thing about the Bible is it always applies to our life. Amen? And, uh, but there are times and there are stories and things that, that, that just seem to apply uh, because of what we're going through in life more than others. And so today we're going to take a look at one of the, the most well-known Bible uh, stories. Again, this is going to be part one of two. And we're going to take a look at the story of the Good Samaritan. You guys heard that story before, right? So we are going to take a look at that. We are going to dig into that uh, this morning. So I'm going to have Ellie come first. Uh, Ellie is going to come and read the children version of this. She's going to come sit up here. We've been doing that during the series. We've been covering some of these heroes of the faith uh, this, uh, this summer here. Why don't you guys step up one more? Get up as high as we can for everybody to see us. And so this allows our kids that are watching online or that are here with us uh, to also engage. Uh, and so here, we, Ellie is going to read the story uh, from her children's Bible of the Good Samaritan. And, and you know, I, I love reading the Bible with her uh, at night when I'm home. And, and uh, there's just sometimes it, it's fun to just hear things. It's good to hear things in a simplified form, uh, you know, because 
it's easy for us to understand as well. It doesn't always have all the details, but uh, I think you'll enjoy this this morning. The Good Samaritan. One day a lawyer put Jesus to the test. He said, I know the law says to love God with all my heart and to love my neighbor as myself. But who is my neighbor? Jesus told him this parable. A man was on his way to the city of Jericho. Some robbers beat him. They stole everything he had. The man was hurt. He needed help. Along came a priest. The priest saw the man but did not stop. Along came a helper in the temple. He saw the man did not stop. Along came a Samaritan man. When he saw the hurt man, he stopped. A Samaritan man cleaned up the man's wounds. He lifted the man onto his own donkey and took him down the road to an inn. They stayed at the inn. The Samaritan man took care of the old man all night long, said Jesus. In the morning, the Samaritan man gave the innkeeper two silver coins and said, Take good care of him until I return. After Jesus finished the story, he asked which one of the three men was the neighbor. The lawyer answered, the one who took care of the hurt man, Jesus said, go and do as he did. Thank you, Ellie. Good job. Give her a hand. She does such a great job doing that, and now we all have kind of a pre-runner to our story today. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 10, Uh, otherwise the verses will be on the screen uh, behind me, and now we will look at... uh the larger version uh, of the story. It has a few more details. We're going to dig into those uh, together this morning. So Luke chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 25. Uh, this is 25 through 37 is the story of the Good Samaritan. It says, One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him for dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, and when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man, and if his bill runs higher, I'll pay the next time I'm here. Now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. Now, there is a lot in this story. This story is just 12 verses long, but there is a lot for us to break down and and to go through. Uh, But there's so much that we can learn in this story. The first part of it, again, this is going to be a two-part story that we can learn. And so this week, we're going to take a look about what does it really mean to love God? What does it really mean to love our neighbor? 
You know, Jesus teaches in, in parables, and that's what we just got done reading here. Jesus tells these stories to help the people that he was with to see the errors in the way of their thinking, and it helps us today uh, as well because it gives us a blueprint for our lives of how to live in 2020. Anyone need a blueprint how to live today? Everything I thought about, I'm all confused. I don't know what's going on anymore or what's happening. Uh, we need God's Word as our blueprint uh, to how to live our lives. And so here, Jesus shows tangibly what it looks like to love someone. He shows us in the story what it looks like to serve others. He, he shows us in the story what it looks like to sacrificially go out of our way to help someone else. You know, sometimes that's the hard thing in life, right? We are all busy. Life is busy. And it can be hard to go out of our way to stop and to help someone. It's like, oh, I, I just don't have time right now. You know, I can't do that. I see a car broken down the side of the road, and it's like, I got to stop, and I got to help. I got to, you know, it, 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 but, you know, sometimes like, oh, do I have, you know, I got to, you got to get somewhere. Somebody told me a story this, this last week about a mother-in-law who stopped to help save a life and, like, made it, like, right as the wedding was happening uh, because she, she stopped and, and she helped. And so serving others and loving others sometimes comes at great cost. We have to uh, be sacrificial in doing that. We see that in this parable here of the Good Samaritan. So again, it's a, it's a two-part story. We're going to look at verses 25 through 29 today where Jesus talks about this most important commandment. And Jesus talks about this commandment in other parts of the gospel as well. And in Mark chapter 12, we have the teaching where Jesus is talking about uh, this commandment uh, to love God and to love others. And so let's look at Mark chapter 12 this morning, verses uh, 29 through 31, and see what Jesus Jesus has to say. How many would you agree that the world needs some more love in it today, right? I mean, it always does, but it definitely does today. Right now, the world is a very divided place, isn't it? And uh, the one thing that I can challenge all of us as a church family uh, to do is to love, amen? Love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. We're, you know, there's so many crazy things going on out there, and I'm not going to get into them because it could get political real fast. Uh, <clears throat> but just love each other. Love people where they're at. Amen. Love, love people where they're at. Amen. That's what we've got to do. We got to love people where they're at and not allow things to get in way, in the way of the relationship that we have with God and with others. And so that's what we need to do. In Mark chapter 12, verse 29 through 31, it says this. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. First of all, isn't it good to know that we serve the one and only God, amen? We serve the true God. There is one way to heaven, and that's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And God is so good that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins so that we might have eternal life. And not just have eternal life when we die one day, but we can live for Jesus and have a sense of purpose and hope on the earth today, amen? So we learn here in Mark chapter 12 that we have this commandment to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our, mind, all of our strength. In other words, with our whole being, with every, with every fiber of who we are, we are called to love God. And here's the reality of this church. If we love God to this extent, we're going to love others. We're going to love others. We're going to even love people that aren't nice to us. And that's hard to do. But if we love God with every fiber of our being, of, uh, of, of every uh, part of who we are, we're going to love God. We're going to love others. We're going to sin less. If you are loving and serving God, it's going to be harder to have that idle time to sin. Isn't that true? So we're going to be able to do that. We're going to be able to forgive easier. We're not going to keep records of wrongs if we're loving God and loving others. It's hard to keep a record of offense and wrong against someone if you're loving them. So we're told to love God and, and, and to love each other. 
We won't be as tempted to gossip. We won't be as tempted to be consumed and fall into the traps and the things of this world if we truly love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our being, all of our strength. And then we're told here in Mark chapter 12 that we need to love our neighbor as ourselves. In other words, love someone else as much as you love yourself. And we all love ourselves, don't we? I mean, we do. I mean, I was going to say, did everybody take a shower this morning? But I won't put you on the spot. Maybe you took a shower last night, you know. And I want you to raise your hand. Somebody's just going to think you're stinky. You didn't shower today. But, you know, we love ourselves. We take care of ourselves. We shower. We bathe. You know, we pluck eyebrows, some of us, hairs, and, you know, so we don't have a unibrow. Or I don't know what you do. Uh, but we take care of ourselves. We, we love ourselves. We look out for number one. We make sure that we get fed I can't wait for Autumn's grad party. You guys are all invited, you know. I can't wait for that party later today. Man, I put pulled, smor uh, pulled pork on the smoker for 23 hours. Oh, I'm hungry right now. I got to wait till 3 o'clock. But I ate the burn ends for lunch yesterday. It was so good. But we love ourselves. We take care of ourselves. And so we are told here to love our neighbor as Ourself. We are told here in Mark that there is no commandments that are greater than these. And so in our story this morning of the Good Samaritan, it begins with this, 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 this religious leader, this expert in religious law, asking Jesus this question in a way to test Jesus. And so the first thing I ask myself when I read a story like this is who is this expert in religious law? Who, who is this guy anyways? In, in, in some translations uh, of the Bible, um, it, it says he's just an expert in the law. Okay, well, if that's the case, um, you know, we have to start asking ourselves these kinds of questions. When you read the Bible, it's important to ask yourselves questions. You know, who is this guy? What law are we talking about? You know, wh wh what's going on here in this story? It's, it's important that we're engaged with the text that we're reading. Amen. It's important that we're, that we're learning everything that we can. When we read the Bible, it's important that we study the Bible. And so I would actually encourage everyone, I haven't said this for a while, I've done it in the past, I'd encourage you to buy a good study Bible. If you look at my Bible here, you've got all the, the verses up here, and I have all these study notes, and then I underline things and, and, and write things in my Bible. I would encourage you to spend the money on a good study Bible where you can read uh, sub uh, uh, things underneath the different verses that give more detail about what you are reading. It's important that we invest in our spiritual growth, amen? It's one of the most important things that we can invest in in our life is growing spiritually. And a good way to do that is through uh, a study Bible. And so as I was preparing this sermon and, and first God first laid this sermon on my heart about three weeks ago, and as I was preparing to do it, one of the things I really felt impressed by the Holy Spirit was to actually kind of walk you through this story this morning uh, of how to use a study Bible uh, just kind of as a, as, a, as a form of discipleship so how all of us can learn how to grow together better in our faith. And so we're going to walk through an example of this this morning of how you can study a passage, not just for preaching a sermon, but in our regular daily Bible study. And so I'm going to do that with you this morning and walk through so you know how to do that. If you've never done it before, you're going to learn something new. And if you've done it before, you know how interesting it can be to see See where uh, you go in the Bible to learn different things. So let's read again in Luke chapter 10, verse 25. It says this. This is the first uh, verse in our text this morning. It says, One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life. So there's a few things that jump out to me uh, and, and probably to you as well when you read that first verse. There may be some questions that you have. Uh, two of the questions uh, that I wrote down first of all is who is this expert? He's a teacher of religious law or an expert of religious law. So who is this guy? Who is this expert? And then what religious law are we talking about? 
right? So, so what, okay, if we're going to fully understand the story, those are two big questions that jump out in just the first verse. And it's easy if you're just reading the Bible just to blow right through that and you read it and not think about some of those, those deeper questions. So an expert in religious law was called a scribe or else they were called a lawyer. Oftentimes these guys were the Pharisees. We've read about the Pharisees in the past. These were the Pharisees of the day. Every once in a while you might find a Sadducee as well that was one of these lawyers and, and, and uh, religious experts. Now, how do you know this? Well, you can know this if you have a study Bible. Me, I you know, have a theology uh, major and background, so these are things that I know, or if you've, if you've studied and you've uh, been discipled in the Word of God, these may be building blocks that you know and you have in your faith already. Uh, but if you don't, one of the ways you can learn some of these things is through having a study Bible and reading those subnotes that go with those, those scriptures. Now, this is what my Bible looks like. You can put up the first slide. It says this after I read that passage. Slide, please. There we go. All right. It says, 1025, an expert in religious law. See note on 517. That is the subheading in my Bible down in these study notes for uh, that verse 25 that we just got done reading. And so, so what do we do uh, with that? We really didn't uh, learn anything from just reading an expert in religious law, C 517. 517 is referring to Luke because that's the book of the Bible, the gospel that we're in right now. But we didn't really learn a lot from that. But what did it do? It gave us another trail to follow. It shows us that we go to verse uh, 17. So now we turn to Luke 17. You see the verse there. And when we turn to this chapter, what this chapter is talking about, uh, you'll read the story, uh, really gets going in verse 18, where Jesus heals a paralyzed man. And so that's the story. We're not going to read that. Uh, we don't have time for that this morning. I'd encourage you to read that on your own. Uh, but as you go through the Bible, you're going to find that it's fun. You're going to find that sometimes, as opposed to going, okay, man, I got to do this for 10 minutes. I hope this doesn't feel like it's too long today. You, you know, if you got some time, you may find yourself reading all kinds of different things that you didn't expect to because studying God's word is fun and you can, you can learn a lot. And, and, and guess what? It can become more than just checking off the box for the day. You know, anyone know what I'm talking about? I mean, I think we've all been there. It's like, oh man, I didn't do my Bible reading yet. All right, better. I got to get, I got all these other boxes. I don't want to, got to check my box off. Uh, you know, Bible reading, studying God's word is a lot more fun than just checking off the box. We've all been there uh, at, at different times, but it doesn't have to be just a task uh, that we do, that we get through for the day, but we can learn and we can, we can grow. We want to be able to get everything out of our time studying God's word, and a study Bible will help us do that. So, for, so verse 17, we continue this trail. It says, one day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all of Galilee and Judea as well as from Jerusalem and the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. So now we read this passage here in chapter 5. And now if you look down at the study notes in your Bible, if you have one, this is what it says about verse 17. It says, Pharisees, see Pharisees, Matthew chapter uh, 3, verse 7, and then in my Bible, is page 1581. It says, teachers of religious law, also called scribes and lawyers, were experts in interpreting the law of Moses. So now we're understanding what laws we're talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, as well. It says, most of the scribes were Pharisees, though some were Sadducees. So you can see that we're then now supposed to turn to uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. Are we learning something as we follow? See how as we follow these things, we're gaining more and more information, more and more knowledge, building blocks to understand what's happening in this parable and who this guy is and, and why he was trying to trap Jesus with the question that he asked him. We're getting some good understanding here, a level of understanding and spiritual growth that we wouldn't have if we didn't have a study Bible. So then we turn to Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, and this is what it says. It says, but when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes. This is Jesus talking. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? 
And so we learn some more here about these interactions and the relationship that was there. We see that Jesus knows who these guys are. They've, they've had some interactions uh, before. You know, I've said it, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I hope they have movie night in heaven. I would love to see this, this, this interaction take place and, and to see Jesus say this to these guys. And so what do we see now if we look down at our study notes, if you have a study Bible of Matthew chapter 3 verse 7, it says this. The Pharisee's name derives from the Hebrew term perushim, meaning either separated ones or exact interpreters. It says the Sadducees are a priestly class probably derived their name from Zadok the priest, 2 Samuel 15, 24 through 29, Ezekiel 44, 10 through 16, coming to watch him baptize or coming to be baptized. So now because of this, we know their roots. We know what the Pharisees were about. We know what the Sadducees' job was by following through a couple of different chapters picking up different areas of the Bible where the Sadducees and the Pharisees are talked about or there's interactions with Jesus. And so all these different study notes give us more information to understand the parable of the Good Samaritan that Jesus is, is talking about here. Uh, we see that these guys know each other, that they've tried to trick Jesus before. And then in my Bible, it says here on page 1581 that there is a whole commentary that then talks about the Pharisees. And you can throw that slide up on the screen. This is an actual picture of my Bible. That's what it looks like. So in a good study Bible, you can see that's highlighted. It's underlined. I make notes. In a good study Bible, I now have a whole thing to read and study more about the Pharisees. And there's all kinds of other scripture passages. And you could get lost just doing this for two hours. And all of a sudden, it's interesting, and it's fun, and you're not just reading words that you don't understand. Anybody read the Bible and just not understood it in their life or something? Yeah, oh, I'll put two hands up, right? I mean, I have. I'm a pastor. I've studied. Th There's times you read, like, what is going on here? And so there are resources that we can have to grow in our life because part of discipleship is not just coming on Sunday morning and expecting me as your pastor, to disciple you, right? I mean, that's supposed to happen. We're supposed to grow together. But we also have to spend time. I challenged all the teenagers last Sunday that came home from camp to make sure that they spend time in prayer. They spend time in God's word because we have to take ownership of our own spiritual growth. Amen? One person agreed. So much easier if you take responsibility for my growth, pastor. I only get you one day a week. <clears throat> Right? We have six other days that we need to be growing and learning uh, in God's Word. So there's a lot of information that we have found out through taking this, this journey through the study notes and just this one verse. Don't worry, we're not going to do this through every verse, these 12. We'd be here for 12 weeks uh, if we did that. We're not going to do that. But I just want to show you how one verse, which would be easy to skip over, talking about a, uh, this religious expert in the law and just, like, oh yeah, and, but not really understand who or what is going on and what kind of law uh, we're talking about. So it's helpful. So, all right, back to Luke chapter 10. For our text for today, uh, it says uh, this, this religious expert asks the question to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, this was a standard question of Judaism. Again, something that you can read and, and, and study, and, and, uh, but this was a standard question of Judaism. The Greek word for inherit is kloron amero. And that was a really hard word for me to say because every time I tried to say it in the correct Greek pronunciation way this last week, I took Spanish in high school and through college and I wanted to roll my R's. And it sounded really dumb saying this word, rolling my R's. And so I, mean, I had to really practice saying that word. Uh, but clay, roan, amero, and it means to receive an allotted share of an inheritance. To receive your allotted share, your allotted portion is what they're talking about here. See, many of the Jews of that time thought their eternal destiny was a result of their good deeds or it was because of a result of the Jewish bloodline that they already had. And so this guy, this religious expert, uh, this lawyer tries to test Jesus and Jesus does 
what only Jesus can do so well. And Jesus just flips the table. Jesus, you always see Jesus just kind of flipping the table on people and talking to them. And so Jesus asks this guy who's an expert, because if he's an expert, he should know the answer, right? So this expert is asking Jesus, Jesus says, well, hey, man, you're the expert. What do you think? What does the law of Moses say to you? How do you read it? And so this religious expert answers the question. Jesus gets him to answer his own question. Jesus is so smart. He's got this way of, of, of doing things in, in a way where he confronts things, but yet, you know, he kind of does it in a confrontationally, non-confrontational way. You know, he just gets this guy to answer his own question instead of getting into an argument with them. So verse 27, it says, the man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. See, this lawyer knows the answer, and he answers the question extremely well. He's an expert in religious law. He should. And so he gives, uh, he gives this answer and Jesus actually compliments him on his answer and encourages him to live that way. In verse 28, Jesus says, right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. See, when Jesus becomes our Lord and Savior, we will love him with every part of our being. We will love him with our whole heart. We will want to live our lives for him. We will want to love others. We'll even want to forgive others and people that have hurt us deeply in our life. Now, by the way, just so that we're clear, Jesus isn't talking about uh, a plan of salvation for this guy and how to be saved. Jesus is having a conversation with this guy to expose his heart. For this guy to look in the mirror and see what's going on in his own heart. Because the lawyer knows right away that he has some issues. And we know that this lawyer knows that he has some issues because he asked Jesus for further clarification then. Verse 29 uh, shows us that this guy wanted to justify his actions. Have you ever been there in your spiritual life? You've wanted to justify your actions. You've wanted to justify your behavior. Sometimes we want to make scripture line up with our will and with our plans and with our behavior. Guess that never works. You know, sometimes we can deceive ourselves for a while. Sometimes we can deceive others. Uh, but we need to line our will up and our life up with God's word, not the other way around. And that's what this guy is trying to do here. So verse 29, it says this. The man wanted to justify his actions, and so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? See, the reality is sometimes in life, some people are just easier to love than others, right? I mean, some people, it's easy to love, and some people, it's just like, God, why did you put them in my life? Maybe to teach you to love deeper, and fuller. And so this guy asked Jesus' this question, who is my neighbor? See, this guy thought that by knowing the law, that's what was important in life. Knowing the law, being a good person. So Jesus shows him that what's important is not in how we look on the outside, but what's going on the inside, what is happening inside of, our heart, inside of our heart. Church, that is the same thing that is true with our lives. We need to be concerned with what's going on on the inside. God is after our heart. I've said it before and I'll say it a thousand times in the future. God is after our heart. You and I can have head knowledge you and I can have Bible verses memorized left and right, and those are all good things to do, to have some of the, the knowledge that we gain today about who this guy is and that we're talking about the law of Moses and, you know, those are informational knowledge level things of Scripture. We can have Bible verses memorized. We can quote them. Those are good things. I'm not saying they're not. We can talk about theology. We can talk about the philosophy of life and all these different things. But what's happening on the inside of us, church, is what's truly important. What's going on 
inside of our heart. See, the Bible tells us that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Man looks on the outside appearance, but God looks on the heart. And you know what? That's really true, isn't it? We judge a book by its cover all the time. We do that with people. We do that when we visit somewhere. We do that when we go grocery shopping. And that's why they have marketing, right? What color, what look, what design. You know, you've got 12 boxes of, you know, breakfast cereal or I don't know, whatever you're trying to, barbecue sauce. There, we'll go back to barbecuing. Which one am I going to buy? Well, this one looks good. Why? I don't know, the shape, the color, all those different things. I mean, that's how we look at the outward appearance. We are so conditioned in our culture to do that. And that is why the devil can get such a foothold in our lives sometimes from a spiritual standpoint. Because again, we try to look at the outside appearance and what's going on where God's looking at the heart. And we need to look at the heart. We need to know what's going on inside of us. God sees what's happening there. And so the Pharisees knew the law. This religious ruler knew that his heart wasn't right. And so Jesus, what did Jesus do? Jesus was trying to help this man. Jesus wasn't trying to condemn this man. Jesus wasn't trying to make fun of this man. Jesus, even though this guy was trying to test him and trap him in a way, Jesus is trying to help this man see what's going on. See, when we love God, even when someone's maybe not being fair or honest with us or trying to trick us, we're still going to love on them. Amen? We're still going to treat them right. And Jesus models that here. This expert of religious law wanted to justify his actions, whatever it is. Maybe he was, had, a, had a bias against certain people. Maybe uh, he had a challenging person in his life to love. Maybe he had a, a challenging neighbor, a challenging co-worker. I don't, maybe there was a, a, another lawyer that he didn't love very well. I don't know. Uh, but he's trying to justify the actions and behavior in his life. But what does Jesus tell us to do in this parable? To love God and to love others. Amen? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick this up next week. You're not going to want to miss it. Look, at I've already preached past our time this morning. Um, and if I dig into this, we'll be here for another 45 minutes if we, if we dig any further. So next week, we're going to pick up part two. This morning, we talked about the greatest commandment, loving God, loving other people. And uh, I hope that you'll join us for that. Again, one of the things that we need in this life is we need more love in the world. And we don't just need, you know, love like, hey, I love my dog. We need God's love operating through us, amen? Church, there is a broken, hurting, and lost world. And what the world needs to see right now is the love of God demonstrated through us, amen? Not, not division, not offense. Don't fall into all the traps that are out there right now and traps that are always out there. Love God. Love others. Look at the, look at your heart. Look at other people's hearts. See what's going on uh, in this life. Amen. So that's my challenge. That's my encouragement to us this morning. Everybody watching online, love God, love others. Let's go before our heavenly Father and pray. You know, if you're here this morning and and you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, the Bible says that we need to confess our sins and place our belief and our hope and faith in, in Jesus. And I just want to encourage you to do that today. And, and uh, if you'd like to do that, I just encourage you to come up front afterwards. There's a couple of us that will be up here, and we just love to, to pray for you. If you'd love uh, uh, to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Heavenly Father, just pray for what's happening in our world today. God, we pray for what's happening on the inside of us and in our hearts God, we pray that as the body of Christ, as your church, as your vehicle on the earth today to tell people about the good news of Jesus, God, that your love would radiate in us and through us and out from us. God, that people might know that we are different because we love instead of taking offense. We love instead of talking negatively. We love instead of getting upset. God, that we might love sacrificially, that we might love unconditionally, that we might love like you did sacrificially with no strings attached, whether someone can repay it back to us ever in our lifetime or not. 
God, we ask that you would help us to be a beacon of light in our community and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for uh, being here this morning. Again, you guys are invited to, to, to Autumn's party later if you'd like to be here for that. Uh, and again, if you decide to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life today, just love to invite you to come up after the service and pray with you. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you for being here.